All right, welcome to the GDC Technology Theater at the NVIDIA booth. Here I'm going to present our next speaker, Russ Kirshner. He's going to be talking about DirectX 11 debugging with Parallel Insight. Anybody out there on the walkway, please feel free to come in, take a seat, enjoy the show. Take it away, Russ. Okay, hi there. Uh, again, I'm Russ Kirshner, and I'm going to cover DirectX 11 debugging with the Parallel Insight uh, with our recent update, 2.1 that has some new features for if you've already used uh, Parallel Insight, or if you haven't used it before, I'll explain those features too. Okay, so really the, the, the soul of Parallel Insight, this is the first development environment that's really integrated into Visual Studio, supporting GPGPU development. Um, so our goal in this was to make it as easy to develop for the GPU as it is for the CPU. Um, consequently, we have some uh, similar technologies in our tool. Um, this is the culmination of years of R&D, uh, both on the hardware side and the software side. We had to get it right in our GPU as well as our software stack. Um, and currently, uh, over 6 million users of Visual Studio can now build, debug, and optimize their GPU applications, all within a familiar environment. Okay, these are the, the three main aspects that I'm going to, well, actually, I'm not going to cover system analysis today, but, but of visual, of the parallel insight, um, we've got the GPU debugger, which is much like a CPU developer. It allows you to stop and step on um, the, the GPU, much like you would on a CPU. Um, the graphics inspector, which is kind of uh, the expanded version of what you would have expected from PerfHUD, um, that allows you to trace through all of your API state and uh, you know, isolate what's really of interest to you. And then system analysis, which is a, a profiling tool um, that allows you to see both activity at the uh, CPU core level, um, as well as the API level, as well as the GPU workload level. So you can see work executing on the CPU and GPU concurrently. Okay, this is our uh, first configuration you can use. This will support most of our features. This will be your host and target all on a single box. Um, and so as you can see the checked off features there, you can do frame debugging, you can do the profiler, uh, you can do system analysis or, or frame timings, and this is all on a single simple box. Okay, uh, for a couple of other features, we're going to need a little bit more complicated of a, a setup. We need a host machine and a separate target machine. Um, the, these include the shader debugger and pixel history. The reason why we're going to need that is because when you're stopped at a breakpoint on the GPU, that's going to stop your entire system, and you're going to want another system to analyze that data with. Okay, this is kind of a cool system if you, if you want to uh, go for it. It's uh, the SlyMOS system. That's SLI, MOS, multi-OS system. Um, and basically this allows you to cram two systems virtually into the same box. Um, the, the first system is going to actually be running Windows native to the box. And then uh, w through parallel software, you'll be able to run a virtual OS. Um, and they have a, a driver that allows you to load the second GPU um, onto the virtual OS so that you can actually uh, debug on there just as you have a second box. Okay, um, again, if you already know about Parallel Insight, I want to pick out the features which are new. Um, we've got dynamic shader editing, so you can edit on the fly and see your, your changes instantaneously. Um, I'm going to show that a little bit later with my, my video. Um, we, we now show constant buffer variable HLSL names. Uh, we, we use uh, D3D shader reflection in order to reflect back and, and so everything is you know, presented just as you saw it in your source code. Um, we've got the frame timings page to crack quickly get timings um, for our GPU draw calls. Um, we've got the ability to serialize and load back profiler sessions. Inside analysis, we've got a call stack trace. I'm going to show that on Friday in my demo. Um, however, if you haven't seen that, that's, that's really cool. You can quickly correlate a uh, draw call in your analysis job to your source code. Um, trace workload correlation means that we uh, allow you to correlate the GPU workloads with the uh, corresponding CPU API call. Um, we've got some overhead improvements, and also we've got a new uh, system information page in analysis.
Okay, uh, so Insight comes with two main components. I'm going to show you the first one, the target side. Um, a is injection and instrumentation of the graphics app on your target machine, which is what we're going to cover right here. And then uh, the, the second part is the remote control and data mining uh, of the data that you collect on the Visual Studio plugin. So the, the, the second part is going to be integrated into Visual Studio. And is this video playing? Let's see. No. Okay, um, so what we want to stress first of all is that Visual Studio is not actually necessary to launch your app as instrumented. Much like with Perfud, we provide a launcher.exe. Um, and so you can either drag drop your application directly onto launcher.exe or you can you, uh, we have a Windows Explorer context menu so you can right click on your application and, and go ahead and play that. And let's see if this video will cooperate. No. I can't get these. I think there is a separate view. Um, you usually have to drag it. Drag and drop it onto the screen. Oh, you went out of the slide show I, I was on this slide. And this doesn't. So it's playing, right? Yeah, I guess it's playing now. But that's, yeah, that's the second frame. OK. So after you have gone and, and you've launched uh, with the launcher execution, um, you're, this is what's going to show. It's, it's going to be very similar for users of PerfHUD. Um, so we've got a scroll, a scroll bar at the bottom um, that you can scrub to any part of the frame. Um, and you can see, OK, I might have a problem with how the gun is highlight is rendering. Um, so you can scrub to that draw call. The yeah, videos. The the Sorry. 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 I think we need some help. Okay. Yeah, okay, I can't even. Let's, okay, so as you can see here, you can, uh, yeah, you can trace through all these draw calls and it'll show you the geometry highlighted um, on the bottom there. Um, and I might be interested in the call where it's uh, specifically drawing the highlights on the floor. And so I can, I can go right there and find that specific draw call. Now up above here, um, you see all the colored lines. Those are perf markers. Um, you can instrument your D3D application that way. It's basically a begin call and an in call uh, with a color. And then uh, that allows you to group together a uh, whole ranges of events and see them easily. OK, here, here what I was doing on the video is inspecting the GPU uh, or the, the render target. And uh, you could see that since it was a float render target, uh, those values were actually displayed as flo floating point. Um, likewise, to render target, you can see the depth buffer or the stencil buffer and inspect all those values just the same. So this is. And you can lock onto the stencil buffer and scrub through it um, if you're interested in you know, stencil shadow pass and how things are really building up. Um, we give you the, the tool to do that. Um, besides render targets, just like PerfHUD, we allow you to look into the textures. Uh, so right here from a glance, you can see we've got 15 pixel shader textures. Um, the alpha transparency is, is visible through the, the checkerboard background. Um, and you know this this uh, this texture definitely contributes to the floor highlight, so that might help solve the problem that we were seeing earlier. Yeah. 
Okay, we also offer uh, serialization features. So this frame that we've just captured, we've got all these API events. Why not bundle that up into something we can save on the hard disk and replay later? We can give it to our QA guys, and, and they can test this on a, a daily basis. Um, I'm, I'm sure you can all think of lots of uses for that. Um, so it takes a, a few seconds to, to get this out to disk. And uh, when we're finished with that, we'll be left with a simple file. OK, there it is. And I can drag that on to nvidia.replayer.100. And uh, that comes up. That's all our events looping over and over in a frame. Um, it's not tied together with the rest of Insight. You could use this as an independent tool. Um, if, if you just want to run you know, perf, perf numbers on it independently. However, you can also just take that replay file, drag it up to the uh, NVIDIA.launcher again, and you'll get all, the, you know, all of the goodness from the frame debugger, all the performance graphs, um, so on and so forth. And then the third way that you could launch it with us is you could actually put it into Visual Studio, uh, put the launcher as your executable, and the argument is going to be this replay file. And then uh, you can use all the features that I'm going to show you in a second. OK, so drilling into the concept of frame debugging a little bit deeper, um, I'm sure of you how you can launch purely from the target side. Um, I want to show you the Visual Studio plugin that exposes much of our functionality. Now, this plugin is available for uh, VS 2008 and VS 2010 currently. Um, so what you can see here is that under our project file, if you, if you highlight the project file, you get this NVIDIA icon that pops above. And, and that allows you to get into our, our NVIDIA launch options. Um, this is going to be the most common option. You know, it's the one that I use most commonly is the external program. There's going to be an absolute path on the remote machine, um, not on the host machine. Uh, and that's going to provide, if you're, if you're used to remote debugging in Visual Studio, that's probably very similar to what you already do. Okay, we also have other options for, uh, for host launches. Um, so all your files can be on your development machine, and you, you uh, give it a folder to start with, and it will copy all those over automatically every time you want to debug. Um, and I'll, I'll bring up that menu in a second. Here we go, under synchronization. There you go. Um, I say, yes, I'd like to synchronize files. Um, give it all your file extensions. And uh, if you want some, some additional directories to synchronize, and we'll bring it all over for you every time. So this can be really, really useful, for, especially for a smaller app if you're, if you're working on a, a concept. Um, I tend for larger applications like Debugging Crisis 2, I tend to just do the remote option. OK, so we've got all the launch options like we want now. Launch from external, external program. And now we can actually kick off the job on the host side. Um, so we say start target debugging. And this is going to do the same thing we saw before on the target machine. We're going to get the actual application window overlaid with performance graphs um, and so on and so forth. And as soon as I want to capture a frame and debug it, I can say pause and capture frame. OK, here I'll, I'll actually show you uh, what just happened on the target side. Um, there we pause and capture frame. That, that all comes up with its goodness. Um, and then on the host side, we get a mirror of that, um, kind of an enhanced UI. You've got all the perf markers again uh, showing places in your application. However, now it's, we've got a much more expansive view of this, and we can kind of use the rich UI um, that's, that's part of Visual Studio in, 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 to uh, you know, expand out and show you a little bit more data. Um, there's all of our draw calls. Again, you can scrub here just like you do on the target, and it's going to be mirrored between the two. Um, we've got really, really nice timeline views for expanding and collapsing your data. Uh, drill into what you want. The other thing I can show you about this page uh, coming up are dependencies. OK, so the idea behind a dependency is if you move to a particular draw call, um, all of those red marks after, after the cursor show 
of uh, draw calls that are dependent upon the cursor. In other words, at my cursor, I'm writing to a render target, which is going to be consumed as a texture later on. And the inverse is also true. You can also see what contributed to this texture. Um, so that can be really helpful if you've got uh, bubbles in your pipeline. You don't want a, the GPU to be waiting on itself to finish writing the previous draw call before you can go on to the next one. OK, so starting at the, uh, the frame page where I was just at, um, let's say I want to kind of inspect the, the pixels around the region of the, the floor highlight again from this side. Um, so you can say see, see details for current draw call. And what you're going to come up with is uh, all the API pipeline state, um, all represented in this hierarchical view. Um, again, we've got a scrub bar, um, so we can move to different draw calls. We're not stuck to this one. Um, and back and forward arrow keys. And you can see that all the shader resources and render targets refresh uh, when you change to the next draw call. OK, and this is a hierarchical uh, 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 breadcrumb display. OK, so you can go back to the lowest level, whatever level you're at. If you're way down deep inside of a texture, you can pop up to the draw call that that's associated with. Um, and it's, it's, it's very convenient to navigate that way. OK. Also, we have the geometry viewer. Um, this is just a, a full screen quad. So I'm sorry, that's not the, the most interesting geometry. But you can look at your pre-transformed geometry here. Um, we've got all of the API stages. Uh, you can see that the inactive ones are grayed out. So there is no hold shader, domain shader. Um, so at a, at a quick glance, you can see exactly how your pipeline is configured. Um, let's go into the output merger, I think. OK, and you can see all the metadata associated with the output major for this particular draw call. Um, so again, this, is, this portion of the tool is similar to PerfHUD, but it's much expanded out um, in terms of the UI. Okay. Um, and I can see that this texture was actually contributing to the, uh, the light map on the floor that I was interested in. So I can drill into that, um, read values just like I did over on the target side. Now I'm on the host. Um, and you can read any map level. And you know the, the navigation is very just slick and easy to deal with. OK, we can also look at the depth stencil view. Um, what's kind of? Uh, weird about this depth stencil view, the, the, the values are very bimodal. Um, so we end up with a lot of white and a lot of black. And it can be kind of hard to actually see what had you know, occurred in the scene. Um, sometimes it's nice to get a little bit more detail than that. So we provide this histogram that actually provides uh, your distribution of values. And we can slide in on that. And, and there you can see you get a, a much better visualization. And if your question is, did I get what I thought I was getting in my depth buffer, um, you, can, you can visualize that much quicker. OK, this, this next one is a huge feature for us. Um, this is the, the pixel history. Um, let's say as a, a story problem, we're, we're scrubbing through draw calls, and we notice you know, the reflection on the gun barrel seems wrong to us. Well, how do we figure out you know, how the heck did that pixel get there? All we know is the value. We, we, we can't see the history of it. Um, so that's, that's the whole goal of pixel history. Um, you can see I, I bring up my render target there just from the, the regular API inspector. And uh, find, the, find the pixel that's troubling me. Now, I, I, could, I could, like I say, just drill into this and inspect the, the pixel value itself. But we actually want to see the pixel history. Um, so there I found my coordinates. Um, this normally takes a second or two. And what it's doing is it's, 
it's it's running through the scene and it's setting a breakpoint on on every uh, pixel shader that could have affected the render target. Okay, so we're setting a setting a bunch of conditional breakpoints with pixel coordinates and uh, primitive IDs and and so on. And so here, there you see I got a bunch of events. The first event is actually a clear call, so we include all calls that could affect not just a, a draw call necessarily. Um, however, by kind of glancing through this history, it's, it's easy to see uh, which draw call actually affected the final render target value. Now you see on the left, each, each value on the left is the render target before the operation, and then the source operation, which in most cases is going to be a fragment from your pixel shader, and then the RT after. Um, and so you can pretty clearly see that this is the event that, that produced the final color. Uh, so that's, that's probably the one that we're interested in debugging first. Okay, and we could just go back to the API state um, by clicking on this link, uh, but right now we are really interested in debugging the pixel. So what that's going to do is going to set a conditional breakpoint, um, identical to the one that we actually used to generate the pixel history. And you can see if I mouse over or if I go into the properties, um, it's got a coordinate, it's, it's got a draw call ID, and it's got a primit ID. That helps us uniquely identify um, that location, that thread, and uh, find out exactly what contributed to that pixel. Okay, but it doesn't have to just be the stuff that we provide in the conditional window. You could also specify local values, um, which are also visible in the locals window. And one thing to note about these uh, GPU breakpoints, this is actually executing as a trap on the, on the GPU. This is no CPU emulation. We're not just you know, emulating one thread at a time. This, this GPU is actually broken and stopped. And, uh, and when we step through it, we are actually stepping through one execution line at a time on the GPU. Um, you can see I, I bring up the locals window. Um, and so you can see our intrinsics as well as all the locals that are active at that point. Um, also, we, have a, a w we can add to the Visual Studio watch window just like you would on a CPU. Um, I just decided I wanted to watch my global value. Um, and as, as you step through, you know, any local val values that update will update in the locals window. Okay, now... What else we could do? Um, I showed you how you can debug one thread with pixel history, but you can also remove the condition from your breakpoint. Stop, uh, stop at the breakpoint, and then there there will usually be many threads active, especially in a pixel shader. Um, and so we can use the graphic focus picker in order to find the active threads. These are going to be highlighted in red, and you can see all the pixels that are being rendered right now on the GPU. And uh, how this could be useful is if you you know you have Obviously, the, uh, the, the threads are going to be running on associated uh, geometry close together. And if you want to compare values, let's say you have like a, a filter kernel or something and you want to understand how the gradient is shifting, this will allow you not only to debug one pixel, but also the pixels in the vicinity. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but every time that I would double click on one of those red squares in the focus picture, that will change the value of the locals window. So you can see the context changing before your eyes. Oops. Okay, a uh, new feature here. Shader edit and continue. Um, this was actually present as a feature in PerfHUD, um, but we just added back into Visual Studio, and it's a much richer environment um, because we can actually use the text editor widow from Visual Studio and you know all the search features that you're used to. You you kind of get that for free here. Um, and so I'm what well, you know to show you that pixel shading isn't or, or pixel uh, pixel debugging features aren't just for 
the pixel shader. They're also for you know the compute shader, for the whole shader, the domain shader. Um, I'm going to look at this tessellated surface here in Crisis 2. Uh, so you can see kind of like the rib surface on, on the walls of the cave here. And uh, I say, OK, even maybe not as a developer, even an artist might be interested in this tool in terms of saying, I want to change the rib height, um, which is you know, available as a variable within my code. So the first thing that I did uh, when I was tracing this is I, I went back through the, the frame debugger and I scrubbed to the uh, precise location where we draw that in the depth only pass. And uh, I can find the domain shader for there in my pipeline and then bring up the source code. Okay, so the next step is pretty easy. Uh, hit edit, right click edit. And uh, now all I have to do is find the location in my code that I'm interested in changing. OK, so I'll just add a, a scale to the normal height there. And then I can activate the uh, edited code and also toggle back to the original. So you can do a, a, a one-two uh, pass comparison pretty easily here. And I'm going to show you what that looked like on the target, too. Um, this was just happening instantaneously as I was uh, pushing buttons on Visual Studio. OK, so you could do this with any shader pipeline. OK, so that's all I've got for this uh, talk right now. If you're interested, uh, Jeff Keel is going to do a live demo of all inside features on Thursday um, between 10 and 11. And then I'm doing another talk on profiling right here, uh, Friday, 1 to 2. Um, so are there any questions?